Another thing that inspired me whenever I see couples coming out and touring around, I don't want to be apart from them if, you know, I have a partner. If I could just have you sitting on that side of the beach with me, looking straight into the sun in front of us. I got a sunset. Now all I need is you. Oh my god, this is so beautiful! Mountain, lake, so blue. Wow, I am speechless, speechless. Good morning. The moon is still out there. Yes. Did you lose a gap? Did I? Probably. I'm asking because we found one on that uh, Indian campsite there. Cap. The front cap. The can't be up there one. No, that's okay, yeah. Really good there. What's one there? <laughs> I made me scared for a minute. <laughs> Did I lose one? Thank you, Doc. That's usually what my mornings look like. Make coffee and tea and whatever I feel like to eat as breakfast. Except, I wasn't really used to this, I guess you can call it one night community. Getting up in a provincial campground, saying hi to the neighbors, or being said hi to by neighbor's dog. That was a new element to my today's morning routine. Normally when I get up, this just myself, with no one around. 
and I can make a lot of noise playing music, taking my time to pack up. There is a checkout time at 11. We are, oh, 10, so better hurry up. Okay, I really need to pack now. I just had this one older couple coming by saying hi and then we ended up chatting for uh, probably half an hour. They've been here for several years continuously already. Alan and Ron shared me with a lot of information what I've seen over the years and the bears, the grizzly, what to look out for, um, the regulations or sort of rules in native land. So many things and this lake we're right now at the campsite that's right in the middle. It stretches 40k north, 40k south. It's a really big lake. And during the day, you can kind of gauge the wind and see if the weather allow you to boat out onto the surface or not. It's not that you want to go out the next day. It's if the lake allows you. It's pretty interesting of how you gotta listen to the nature. Okay, let's pack. They also told me some uh, walking trucks to check out so see this is the upside of staying in a provincial campsite is you sometimes meet very knowledgeable people that share their experience with you me as a rookie <laughs> there is so much to learn and it's such an honor to be able to talk face to face with the more experienced and listen to their stories and i guess acquiring myself with knowledge that I otherwise would not know or otherwise would take decades to learn. Okay, I'll just show you guys how I pack. My bed fold in forward, so I'll bungee strap it to the front and keep them together so I have the space in the trunk to put my other things. Extra water jug in there. I have my main water jug in the front driver's seat. So when I am sleeping, I leave my shoes in the compartment right in front of the water jug. But while driving, I'll put the heater here. I think that's about it. The side is done. My chainsaw sitting here. The battery right here. Since we used it last night, We will charge it up. I strap everything down so when I'm bumping through corrugation and um, forest road. Things are not flying everywhere and scratching and everything. So the table goes right beside the fridge. Tie down everything. So you can see I still have some spaces in there. I can pack more stuff, but uh, those will need to come out when I sleep. So I tend to not overpack it. Since we're at checkout time, I'll just leave the car at day use area and we'll walk around and check out some of the places that
pretty. I'm not sure if you can see the couples who are just standing right there by the water. Another thing that uh, inspired me, I guess, is just whenever I see couples coming out and touring around, especially now they've retired, they've got all the time in the world, get an RV. They actually come from where I'm from, um, the same city, um, same municipality at least, and drove all the way up here for so many years already. It's sort of almost like the summer ritual. Um, spending time together as a couple, it kind of reminds me of how I guess my parents, so many. Asian parents too, they get caught up in life and thinking the whole idea is just that men will be out there earning money and then women staying at home taking care of their kids. A lot of time they're not together, especially as a transplant like me. Um, so many times when I was taking my parents tour in Australia, I kept telling them whenever we see an uh, RV roaming on a road with two other couples, kept I kept telling them this is what you guys should be doing. Um, but yeah, they're not as adventurous or not. Somehow I feel like they've lost the idea or they've never had the idea or knowledge about how to enjoy life. Their whole life is just about working, earning money. And that's about it. When they're, when they're actually having free time on their hand, they don't know what to do about it. That's really, really sad. I wish one day I could see them doing things like this by themselves. Not that I don't want to bring them, but you know, a couple of times. Because sort of looking at them, I'm looking at my... My future will look like, and I don't want to be like that. I don't want to not be with my partner traveling, relaxing, doing leisure things together. I don't want to be apart from them. If, you know, I have a partner, then what's the point of having a partner? At least right now I can do it myself. But, yeah, that will be the ideal life later down the road, I guess. Not that easy to get. Almost one the only dream of. There is a turn off. I didn't turn in on my way in because it says traditional village site, but the couple told me to come check it out because um, it's, at the time when I was thinking because COVID is so happening, a lot of the native reserve, they don't want visitors to come in. So I thought, oh, probably I shouldn't go into the village. But apparently this site is, uh, there's no one living in there anymore, but it used to. Right now it's just reserved for sort of almost a sightseeing spot. I'm surprised it's not marked on a map. Apparently they tell me Christy Clark has been here when they signed the treaty with uh, natives people. And um, you know, we're all out in a bush, but those government officials, they were in full on suit and tie and <laughs> walking in dirt, on dirt road. They were like, do you feel a little overdressed or not? I guess we'll check out what's in there. Wow. Okay, yeah, so they told me at the outhouse, there's a little gate that you can open and squeeze through. And it's not locked, so I would assume I can. They just don't want cars to come in here. That's why the big gate is locked in. 
another outhouse. It's like almost like how do you like I don't know oat time classroom sort of thing. Look at this wooden structure and this. Oh, the art they carved out. Oh, what is this little hump thing? Oh, this is the house. Look. So they have tied the doors up. I'm pretty sure it's for animals. Otherwise, they will use a lock if it's for people. But because of the complexity of the knot, I'm not going to open it. But we'll take a peek. Dude. And what's amazing is all of this is built just on a hump of land, I guess. It always amazed me how resourceful people in native land are, how they just use what's around them to build things out of nature, out of really what comes from the ground, from the land, instead of mass manufacturing production. Um, yeah, let's take another look. You just, I guess, somehow reinforce the inside to support the dirt on top and make a door out of it. Look, there's even a cute little bench. That's just a stump. You know, I always wanted to make benches like that. Where you just cut stumps as the base, the leg, and then flat pieces on top. I've had a thought of making it once and I brought power tools out. My friend bought wood. As I got out, I realized I didn't bring any bits. Ah, uh, what a fail. Back to the car and keep driving. What's full today? I would say we had a fairly good start. A little bit lost, but I think I found my way. Um, it's telling me the rare condition for the next 48k can be impassable at a certain time of year. Four wheel drive recommended. We have four wheel drive, we'll see how bad it can be. Looks like a little hidden campsite right here. That <laughs> you get to be on a pile of grass that's flattened out by tires. Um, obviously, people have been here. Uh, got some firewood, and again, that mountain and lake combination. Can't get over with this. How pretty. We could probably very well camp here today, but it's still way too early. I am actually a little behind schedule. 
schedule um, of the places that I want to check out. Might not have enough time to check out the other lake, but I would assume it's just as pretty, if not better. The caribou area, you need like a month. Many of you ask if I'm ever lonely on the road by myself. I guess a more tested answer is, you're not lonely as long as you have no longing. As a single girl, I was fearless, unstoppable, bulletproof. The heart was like a solid rock grounding me to my journey. Long or short, far or near, nothing could yank me back home other than mechanical issue. But once you slip, even just a tiny bit of crack, you start to wonder what the heck are you doing out here alone? What's wrong with staying home, with finding and crawling into a pair of welcoming arms? You could almost feel like that the solitude was a punishment to yourself. That perhaps you don't deserve love. When you see giant horse-like animal with camel shoulder hump, most. They're so huge! Camus is protected in this community since they can only give birth to one baby at a time. For a healthy moose population, let's stay back and let them walk away on their own. Um, I'm going to air up here. <laughs> Drive onto the highway for another, I don't know, hour or two. That was a good five, six hour on a dirt road. Some very narrow trail too. Um, we get, we're trying to get closer to the hiking entrance. I'm planning to do it tomorrow, but um, yeah. Still need to find a camp somewhere along there. All right, these adjustable shocks are great when they're clean. Uh, I can't even read the number. Let's go by feel. One, two, three. Okay, set of fires to cook. I will slowly start to prepare for the night, but look at this. Perfect sunset as the cloud clear out just enough for the sun to come. Oof. And if I could just have you sitting on that side of the beach with me, looking straight into the sun in front of us, right there. I mean, it is a really tiring day driving, but hey, we got a decent spot with no one else and I got a sunset. Now all I need is here. We might be having a problem. It's not immediate yet, but having a leaking CV is definitely not good. Okay, we're at Trailhead for tonight's camp, airing down again, and then I found... I forgot to put the cap on. This one? 
and that one. Two more cups. Ugh!